and welcome to today's top story. Something that's really interesting and um, has been in the news quite a bit for several months now, um, the refugees. Um, of course, we hear an awful lot about it through American media specifically when they refer to the caravan you know, the latest being the caravan and, and their very strict policy. Um, joining us from the Sioux Community Career Center is Brenda Cooper. Brenda is a volunteer coordinator for volunteers. <laughs> How are you, Brenda? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Now, we want to talk about refugees um, here in Sioux St. Marie. What, um, in your mind, what is your job with regards to them? Um, well, I coordinate volunteers. What happens when a refugee family comes, we try to have a, a little core group of volunteers who um, will often meet them at the airport. Uh -huh. um, we'll visit them. They're usually in a hotel for a week or two until they, they can arrange permanent housing. Um, people who will um, transport them around for groceries or to medical appointments or and just become a little social circle support circle um, my husband and I are with a family and it's been two years and it's become kind of like family it's a, it's a lasting relationship and a lot of our um, a lot of our volunteers say that so some people are very active in volunteers are very active in we collect um, gently used household goods uh -huh. and uh, things like that to help them set up their homes because they're coming with nothing and they have a housing allowance uh, like a furniture allowance but it doesn't really go very far when you think of how many things you have in your house that it takes to live your daily life it's a lot so there's the the gathering things the welcoming and then just kind of being that that social circle and what I'm happy to see is that the social circle spread because my family has now met my children um, some of and my grandchildren and some of the families have uh, um, really expanded it uh, to their friends and their relatives as well. And the, uh, one of the other things that um, we try to set up several times a year is what's called a gathering of friends where we have a church hall that we can use and we um, bring together the families, their volunteers, and anybody from the community that's interested in meeting them. And those are, the, it's, it's just to create the biggest social group that we can for the newcomers so to help them fit in. Um, the volunteers role is to teach them how to live independently in our society and it's very very different. Um, the language is a real barrier in the beginning. <coughs> um, s the uh, families all go, the, the children go to school of course, mm -hmm. the adults go for um, English as a second language lessons and we have some of our volunteers who will go into the homes as tutors just to kind of supplement that and to to encourage more con English conversation. Um, there, the, the idea behind in the program from the federal government is that in one year they will learn enough English to, to be able to be employed. And that's not strictly true because it's hard to be say, fluent. How do you feel about that? Uh, it's, it's, it very, it's very difficult to be fluent in another language mm. in, in a year. Particularly if you are um, coming from one of the Middle Eastern countries where, you, where Arabic is your first language because you have a different alphabet. I have seen my name written in Arabic many times and I could couldn't pick it out of, of really? anything. Yes, it's it's really difficult difficult. But they do learn and what we're finding is the ones that are into their second year are um, starting to starting to get jobs and to be employed and it's just it's gradually happening. It just it doesn't happen on a really strict timetable. Right, it takes right. time. And everybody's different. Some people um, become independent very quickly and some it takes a little longer and a lot of it depends on what they've been through. And, I was going to uh, say depending yeah. where they come from. And where, where do they come the from? refugees who have settled in Sault Ste. Marie, where are they from generally? Um, the majority of them so far have been um, Syrian. We've had people from different countries in Africa. Um, we've had a family from Myanmar and um, other Middle Eastern countries mm -hmm. as well. There have been, um, there's right now 28 families living in the Sioux. There's been more than that came. We had about 200 people come in um, and some of them have left, about 50 left to go to um, communities where they had friends or family where it was oh, going to be easier okay. to settle. Mm -hmm. But the 28 families that we have are, are pretty much settled here and I know there's a perception that there's a lot of people that that's a lot of people, but um, 28 families in a, a city this size is not that huge. Um, and it's just, uh, 
I think it's a benefit. I think the zoo is becoming much more multicultural, mm -hmm. and I, I happen to think that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, you know what? What a great opportunity for education. Yes. I mean, just to, to sit down and ask questions of. Mm -hmm. You know, we have no idea. You and I were chatting before we went to air, and you were talking about how these, a lot of them, show here, and they have nothing. Like, nothing. Yeah. And it's hard for us to even imagine yeah. getting many, a house set up. Many of the families who have come from refugee camps in, um, in Africa um, come with very little because they were living in the, you've seen pictures, yes. I'm sure, on, mm -hmm. in the media of the big camps, so they don't have a lot. And uh, <clears throat> That's one of the things that are uh, wh why our volunteers are important are mm -hmm. to help them with things. Um, we always have people offering us clothing, and I do want to say that we can't accept clothing unless we have a person of a specific size, and we know we need a garment because we have no storage space for it. Ah, that's okay. our, our whole problem with okay. um, all of the the household goods and things that we collect. Um, we're pretty much limited to things that people can hold for us till the day that we need them. And we have been searching high and low for some free storage space that's dry and and safe, to, rodent free and good to, mm -hmm. put, to put our stuff in. But we're managing. It's just, uh, it's it's just a, a, it's a challenge. Thing. It's a challenge. So um, I've had a lot of people contacting me about clothes and what I just say is, uh, tell me what you have, give me your your phone number or your email and I'll, I'll get back to you. Right. Yeah. And then you ask around. The, yeah. the refugee community yeah. to see, you know, who what needs what, need, yeah. and I'm sure they must appreciate everything they get. I think they do. I think they're, they appreciate the kindness of the people. They are very grateful to Canada for having welcomed them, and uh, I, I would say yes, they are. You know, it's interesting because we, we need to, in my mind, we need to accept neighbors. You know, mm -hmm. um, and we have so much in this country. It's it's such a good opportunity, as I mentioned earlier, for us to all learn about different mm -hmm. ethnicities and different ways of life to remind us how well we have mm -hmm. it here. One of our volunteers said to me, I had asked for, I was just asking some of the volunteers to kind of share their experiences with me. And <clears throat> one of them said, I feel that being born in Canada was like winning the lottery. Wow. And it's why he volunteers, because he feels like he would like to give back for all the things that he received. And um, That's yeah. amazing. Another, I, another, uh, just, uh, sure. another volunteer said that uh, what her family taught her was that um, people who have nothing can still be very happy if their family, if the, the family is all together, then they are very happy and they are rich. And you said too, just before we started, that... Um, we don't realize how how well we are here as far as human rights go. Yes, a lot of the families, um, excuse me, <coughs> a lot of the families who have come were in countries. Um, I'm thinking of Syrians, particularly if they went to a country like Lebanon as their country of refuge. They had no human rights there. They they weren't citizens. Um, often the children weren't allowed to go to school. Um, they just didn't have human rights. They weren't particularly wanted. I think that often they were discriminated against in being charged higher rents and things like that. It was, it was, it's been very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the things that they're very grateful about when they come to Canada. I had one fellow tell me that the best thing about Canada was that he had human rights again. So that's pretty wonderful. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Now, with regards to somebody who's watching um, this morning, and and they want to get involved, they want to help. We hear of refugee families who come to, you know, Ontario, to Canada, and they're sponsored. So what does that mean and how can we help as a community be, to go beyond that? Okay, well, the, the sponsoring, the, the um, refugees who come through the Sioux Community Career Centre are sponsored by the government. Oh, they're called okay. Government Assisted Refugees. Then there's another group that are called BVOR Families, and I can't remember what the acronym <laughs> is, but they are sponsored um, half by the government and half by private groups, community groups or churches, churches and we yes. have some of those here. Mm -hmm. um, if someone is w wanting to get involved, um, they can contact me. If you go onto the um, Sioux Community Career Center website okay. um, and go to there, there's a page called Newcomers, and there's a little email box that if you fill that out, it comes to me and I could contact you to see what what you wanted to do. Terrific. Thanks yeah. so much for coming by. So at this point, you need do you need materials or do you need people more? Okay, we need, um, we need some volunteers. We have several families that are coming before the end of the year.
Um, so we need volunteers. I just had a volunteer session the other night and got some very enthusiastic people. I'd like to have a few more. Um, we need um, couches and dressers and towels and new pillows. <laughs> All we also things. really could use storage space. If there's anybody out there who has an empty place that's dry uh, that we could store things, ideally it would be big enough that we could also do up packages. We have a lot of um, dishes and kitchenware. Mm. It would be nice to spread them out and do up family packages. But any kind of storage space, um, Wouldn't please let us know. One of the uh, locker storage facilities donated a couple. Uh, we of do. They, yeah. um, we really? Have, we have. Yes. Oh, that's so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, we we have two units at uh, at Rusio's and uh, they're full. Terrific. They are full. <laughs> good, good. So awesome. So if you're interested in either becoming um, a volunteer with your time or donating anything, call Brenda. Get a hold of Brenda through the um, website at Sioux Community Career Centre and go to Newcomers. And this is Brenda Cooper. Brenda, so good of you to stop in. Continued good work. Well, thank you for having me. We'll be back right after this.